This is Twit. This is based on the the revision and update that Apple made of their iOS security document. I found reference to one that was dated 2012. This one is February 14th, 2014. So this contains essentially a, a current snapshot of Apple's statement about what they've done for iOS security. And I mean, I, I couldn't decide whether just to title the podcast iOS security, which is the title that ultimately won, or crypto extravaganza or crypto <laughs> crypto heaven. Because I, I mean, I, I'm just it, it, it's really interesting, too, because there were some areas where their new thinking exactly tracks the the thinking that has been developed for Squirrel. I mean, the, oh, the same. Hmm. I mean, it really was. It was like it was like sort of freaky. Was I was reading through the iOS dot dot document, and they were explaining like how the fact that they use Touch ID, which allows you to bypass a password, allows you then to use a, a longer, more painful password, which you wouldn't otherwise use. Remember, I was just talking about that with the way Squirrel uses a hint. Where after you once enter your really long squirrel password, you can then just sort of remind it that you're still you just by giving the first few characters of that password. And the the fact that you're able to back off from that requirement encourages people to use a you know a really good one that they only have to use very infrequently. Well, and this exactly the same trade-off and logic is like laid out in this document. So it's like, oh, okay, well, that sounds very familiar, Apple. And there's other places too. In fact, they've, except for one place, they've they've chosen all the same crypto that I chose. The the same um, Dan Bernstein uh, two five five nineteen elliptic curve and so forth. So that's not completely very, surprising because that's probably best in class and kind of what it is. Well, agreed yes. To be. Yeah. Yes. Um, although, you know, an independent discovery we know happens all the time. If, you know, people sit down and try to find the best solution, given the same set of starting circumstances, they're apt to come to the same conclusion. And but that's what's ha happened here. Speaking as an end user, it, make, it, it makes me feel better about it that they chose the same thing as, as my oh, security I was guru. I was smiling as they, and they said, oh, we're using Curve 2519. It's like, that's oh, right. well, yes, yeah. Yeah. good. That's what you should be using. Except... One place. Uh oh. There is a bad NSA. Uh, oh no. Oddity. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Um, I mean, and it just stands out. It's like the one place they used the wrong elliptic curve, and it's an NSA compromised one, mm. and it couldn't be in a worse place. Yeah, what a surprise. It's in, it's in the iCloud keychain logic to protect everyone's iCloud backed up password libraries and so it's like oh and it just stands out there they, and they just kind of casually said yeah we use 2p p256 and it's like what what you didn't use it anywhere else why are you using it here interesting isn't that interesting really freaky so yeah we have mm. but there's just i have to say i mean my overall take with with that exception i mean that, that does sort of spoil the whole apple uh, but um they did everything right. They, I mean, step by step through the design of this, it is fabulously structured. And at nowhere that I could find are they taking any advantage or are they, are they t taking more than they need to? I mean, the, the architecture demonstrates a, a, a comprehensive respect for the user's privacy. I mean, it's just, it's immaculately designed. So, you know, I'm, I, I came away feeling, you know, really comfortable with it, with this one caveat, yeah. which uh, we'll talk about. But it's also the case that where they have made communication easy, such as with iMessage, the, you have, you have security but privacy is completely broken. Yeah. It's completely broken. So even though the security is good and, you know, we, we, all we got was murky information about iMessage before. Now it's laid out. 
and it's it is absolutely demonstrably provably secure except we have to trust apple because they maintain the directory of public keys and it it explicitly allows them to insert themselves in the middle to be to perform a man in the middle attack if they wanted to and which you know in, in a in an environment where they're also prioritizing ease of use i mean and that i have to give i have to tip my hat again it's amazing how much security they have created and hidden the the inherent trade off that you normally have with crypto. I mean, what we're holding in our hands, these little iPhones and iPads, they are little crypto bricks. They're amazing instances of applied cryptography. I mean, they, they really are tremendous, given what we now know from this document.